ambassador of God is called to obey God. Thank God we're going to obey God. Amen. That is the sacrifice. We don't sacrifice animal anymore. We don't sacrifice pigeons anymore. We don't sacrifice anything anymore that is physical or natural. Our sacrifice now is the obedience we render to the Lord and the speech we give unto the Lord. Let your speech at home let your speech in the church, let your speech with your neighbor, let your speech in the office, let your speech with provocators. There are people that will provoke. They do it deliberate, deliberately. They're saying this is one level of provocation. If you turn, change, stop obeying the Lord, stop obeying the Spirit of God, and you obey us, provocation will be over. But if you are heady, if you are stubborn, and you say you will be obeying God, and you will not obey us, and you will not submit and yield to us, the provocation will continue will provoke you to the point you lose yourself you lose your life you lose even the eternity you say you are running after but you know even with those provocators let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt that ye may know how ye ought to be uh, to how to how ye ought to answer every man we must answer them <laughs> we cannot become so fearful and so timid and so intimidated that we allow provocators to have the height of the day we must answer them you will answer them we're coming to point number three here. That is the third aspect there. Our obligation in the service of God. Our obligation in the service of God. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto God. That is our life, small or great. The details of our lives, small or great. The things we do, the things we refuse to do. Let it be an offering unto the Lord. Sacrifice of praise to God. And it says continually 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 dry season rainy season continually happy times horrible times continually good time bad time continually you are offering praise unto god nothing ever moves you from that state and status that you offer unto the lord the fruit of our leaves giving thanks unto his name that's what the lord has called us to that demands grace in our lives in hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 28 it says we wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace let us have grace we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved we're going to the land that he has promised he will give unto us we're getting to paradise the pleasant land that 
That's the reason we left the world, we left sin, we left evil. Don't forget your goal. Don't forget your pursuit. Don't forget the purpose of coming out of Egypt because we're going to inherit the land that is given unto us. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably if what we do is out of habit not out of grace your service will not be acceptable to the lord if what you do is out of human energy human whatever but it's not because you have grace and more grace and more grace whatever you do that is graceless whatever you do that doesn't have the love of God, the grace of God in the sight of the Lord, it means nothing. It says we must have grace to serve God acceptably with reverence, with honor, with honor and godly fear. May the Lord give us more grace. And it is when we are humble, He giveth more grace. He receives the proud, but He gives grace unto the humble. We're coming to point number three. Point number three is the standard for solemn submission to the commandments of the Lord. To the commandments of the Lord. To the commandments of the Lord. We're looking at Numbers chapter 30. And we're reading from verse 2. Numbers chapter 30. We're looking at verse 2. It says, If a man vow, a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath, unto to bind his soul with bond he shall not break his word he shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth if a man vow a vow We'll come to that. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 4, reading from verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do, for to do them. It says that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from that from that that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you in chapter 12 of Deuteronomy reading from verse 32 chapter 12 verse 32 what things soever I command you Observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. We're looking at the commandments of God. We're looking at the vows that men, women, young people make. The standard for solemn submission to the commandments of the Lord. 
you are going to discover as we read through the Bible, vows were frequent in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, vows are not emphasized. Why? We have the commandment. And if you make a vow, even if you fulfill the vow, but you disregard the commandments of God, it doesn't grant you favor with God. And everything you vow, in any case, already, if it is commanded by God, the vow that aligns with the word of God is accepted, acceptable. The vow that does not align with the word of God is not only dangerous, it's damning, damns your soul. The Lord has commanded the children of Israel, they will not bring the hire of a dog unto him. If anybody made any vow that you bring the hire, the sales of a dog unto God is rejected because he doesn't align with the word of God. And the vow of a harlot, God said, the gift of a harlot, he will not accept. A harlot then goes on in her fornication. A harlot then goes on in the works of the flesh and then gets some money. I vow this to the Lord. It's not acceptable. The commandment of God is higher than any vow. And that's what, that's what the Lord is teaching us, that we have enough commandment in the word of God. In Matthew, it says, Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What else are you going to vow beyond that? In Mark, it says, Repent ye and believe the gospel. And it says, What I say unto all, I say unto you, watch. And it says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What vow are you going to have more than those commandments? In Luke, he tells us that if you're faithful in a small thing, you're faithful also in much. If you're unfaithful in a little thing, you're unfaithful also in a much. What vow goes beyond that? John tells us that by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one towards another. Love one another. John says, ye must be born again. If you are not born again, and then bow, 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 it's rejected in the sight of the Lord. It tells us in that refresh, ye therefore, and be converted, that refreshing may come from the Lord unto you. If you don't repent, if you are not converted, because he sent Jesus, that he will bless us by turning us away from our sins. If that is not there, what vow are we going to vow before the Lord? In Romans it says there are people that hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. And it says what we shall pursue is the faith, is the righteousness that comes by faith. Because you must move from faith unto faith. If we don't do that, I vow, I vow. What's the value of that vow before the Lord in First Corinthians? It tells us, it says, Do I speak with men's uh, with tongues of men and of angels and not, not have love, charity? I'm just like say, you know, a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. Do I have all the faith to move mountains and I don't have the love that will stretch forth the hand of mercy and grace to my neighbors. It says, I am nothing if I give my body to be burned. 
what, what power can you have beyond giving your body to be bought and you don't have charity it says you are nothing it says in corinthians i want all of you to be a one mind to speak the same thing that there be no division among you if the division in our heart division in our attitude and we vow and vow and let the vow is useless it says in second corinthians come ye out from among them and be ye separate says the lord if we're not separate from the corruption of the land if we're not separated from all the evil the worldliness of the land and we vow and vow and vow what does that mean touch not the unclean Thing, and I will receive you and I will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters says the Lord Almighty the commandments are more important and the commandments cover everything Galatians tells us bear ye one another's bodies and so fulfill the law of Christ. If we don't bear any burden from anybody, if we don't bear their idiosyncrasies and their weaknesses and their attitude, if we're always fighting, I won't accept that, I won't accept that, I won't take that, and then we vow before the Lord. What's the use of the vow when the commandments of God are there and we do not keep the commandments? It tells us in Ephesians, it said as their children that we should walk in love that's a commandment we should walk in love even as christ loved us and he sacrificed himself for us if we don't do that and then vow 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 what does it matter to anybody philippians tells us rejoice and i say unto you rejoice if we go about a little thing upon the, that person did not honor me did not greet me did not do this i cannot rejoice and i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord if we're not obedient for that and we're not rejoicing and he says what things so ever what things are pure what things are lovely what things are just what things are good what things are holy and what things are good but you think of all these things that's the commandment of God, if we don't do that, I vow, I vow, the vow means nothing. Money, what does money matter if there's no love and if there's no obedience to the commandment of the Lord? In Colossians, it says, Search your affections on things above and not on things on the earth, for ye are dead and your life is seed with Christ in God. If we don't set our affection, on things in heaven but we set affections on things on earth what does each profit it tells us um, in um, it tells us in first Thessalonians it says when I see your work of faith and I see your patience of love your patience of hope it says I remember all the time and they left all those things in the world and they turned from idols to serve the living God. If we don't do that, I vow, I vow, what will the vow mean? It tells us abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from what other people will see and look at and say, ah, uh ah, -uh, brother so and so. This it appears evil, sister so and so. This appears evil, and we're just, you know, evil, appearance of evil. We're just here and there. We're not obeying the commandment of God. What does that matter? Obeying the kingdom commandment matters more than I vow, I vow, I vow. It tells us in a second, in second uh, Thessalonians, it says, let everyone do his own work in quietness, not in loudness, not in fighting. Do your work and then you have to give to other people that have need. If we are going about, I live on charity. I beg this one, can I have some money? I borrow from this, can I have some money? And we never pay back. And we're not doing any profitable work as we're commanded. What does that 
profit. <clears throat> he tells us in his commandment in First Timothy, and he says, This is the way we should live, doing nothing but partiality. We're not to be in that. We're partial in a relationship with people. With this one, like I seek, Esau, go and get me the kind of food I like. That's what I like in you. I don't like the marriage. I don't like your mother and me were distressed because of your marriage. But I love your food. Go get me something to eat. The man that sold is but right. You know, if we're partial, the way we deal with people and the way we relate with people, the commandments are there, we're not obeying. And he tells us in Second, in second Timothy, he said, you knew these scriptures, the scriptures that are able to make you wise unto salvation. Continue in the word you have learned, knowing of whom you have learned it. If we don't continue in the word, and we don't continue in everything we have learned, everything we are hearing, I just come to make a vow. How much is the vow? What are you offering to the Lord? Uh, as we are going to build this, build that, I give a million, a million of our currency, what does that amount to? Will that buy the favor of God? The very fact you are a child of God, and this is what God requires, building for God, that's part of the commandments, and creating a place of a sanctuary for the abode of the Lord, that's already part of the commandments. There's no special, uh, I vow, I vow, and then I'm, I'm cruel to my wife at home. I vow, I vow, I'm deceptive. To my husband at home, I vow, I vow, those vows mean nothing. If you really give the commandment of the Lord to the background, he wants us to look at the commandments of God, take nothing away and add nothing. It's by living on the commandment of the Lord. That is how, as we're continuing the things we have learned, because all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for a proper correction, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And Titus tells us, he says that because he has redeemed us from all iniquity. He says now we're peculiar people unto the Lord. It's another, it's a commandment that we're peculiar unto the Lord. You are not peculiar, you are common, you are sinful, you are backsliding. And then I vow, I vow, the vow means nothing in the sight of the Lord if you are not obeying the commandment of the Lord. And uh, Philemon says, uh, Paul the Apostle says, pray for me. I believe that by your prayer, your will, I will be delivered and I will see you soon. If we're not obeying the commandment to pray for the ministers, we're, we're looking for their fault. We're looking for, you know, whatever they will say wrong. And then somebody will trip them and tip them. And then they say something. Uh -huh, and you, you see how he's speaking now. You see what he has said now. Are you praying for him? Do you want the world? to imprison him, maybe he's already in prison, and he says, pray for me that I'll be delivered unto you. Are we doing that? He tells us in Hebrews, he said, follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's the commandment right there. And he says the commandment is more important. It covers the whole of life rather than a little vow. I'll give a goat to the Lord. No, he wants you to give up the goat in the heart. The stubbornness in the heart. And follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. First Peter says, live 
with them, live with your wife with all wisdom, so that you may partake of the same grace. And he says to everyone, he says, be holy for I am holy. That's the commandment. It's we keep to that commandment. That's when we will have the favor of God, the mercy of God continuing in our lives. But I want to make a vow. No, don't look at the commandments first. Don't take anything away. Don't add anything. Just stay by the commandment of the word of God. Christ has left us an example that we should follow after his steps. What vow will go beyond that? And then in Second Peter, it says, He's not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. All shall come to repentance. Are you looking at your life? Are you looking at where you are being? Are you looking at what you are doing? And then you are following after the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ and you're living a life that shows you are bringing forth the fruit of repentance. Now, without all that, vow, 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 as they did in the Old Testament, meant nothing. Do you remember? Of all the people that came out of Egypt, and they went, they were to go through the wilderness and go to the land of Canaan. Obviously, men, women, children they made some vows if you do this for me i will give you this don't say that already has made all provision he has given all promises he has given everything he will give so if you do this to no it's not by faith not because i vowed he gave me a child it's not by faith not because I vowed, he gave me a job, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It's now all available through Christ, not through a vow. In Second Peter, I said, I reminded you, he wants all to repent. First John, he that has this hope in, in him, purifies himself even as he is pure he wants purity of heart and purity of life that's the commandment rather than saying okay i will do this i will do this the vows are not as essential as the commandment of the lord now in second uh, john i'm so glad i have no greater joy that my children walk in the truth in the truth in the truth it's as we do that we're walking in the truth we're living in the truth we're abiding in the truth vows become unnecessary what gladness god is not offering him a goat offering him a room in our house offering this and offering that all those things are covered in love your neighbor as yourself because if you are homeless, you want somebody to house you. If you are jobless, you want somebody to help you. Okay, God, if you do this for me, I'll go out and find a job for somebody. No, that's already contained in the word. Love your neighbor as yourself. As you come to, uh, you know, the, um, the third John, it says that, you will prosper as your soul prospered and be in health. It means you are not exalting healing above salvation, above sanctification. You are not exalting, you know, human earthly prosperity above the ministry prospering. And all those commandments are already there. It tells us in Jude that you are earnestly content for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints that you look at it that that's more important to god that you look at the faith the totality of the revelation of god and you contain earnestly and you preach wholeheartedly and you give all your heart all your mind all your soul into that earnestly contain for the faith once delivered Unto the saints, that's more important that that little vow, that little vow, go back to the commandments of God and lay by that commandment. 
keep yourself in the love of God and do not be entangled with all these people that have gone here and there. The, the angels that left their first estate and the children of Israel that left their first estate and the Sodomites that left the commandment of God and now they reserve unto eternal punishment. But you be at the center of the will of God, of the watch of God. It tells us in Revelation, it says, Behold, I stand at the door, open the heart, open your heart, that I may come in unto you, and I will support you. It says, He that overcometh. He wants you to be an overcomer, an overcomer over your flesh, an overcomer over your past bad habits and overcome over the false doctrine that is running around in the land that we have. He wants you to be an overcomer, an overcomer over the habit of the backslider, over the lifestyle of the backslider, an overcomer over the flesh. The works of the flesh are these, and you know them, adultery, fornication, and all the excesses, lasciviousness, be an overcomer comma over them that is the commandment and if you are not an overcomer and you are running around i vow this vow i vow this vow that vow is useless has no profit in the kingdom of god come back to the commandment of god what ministers is said going into to all nations and teach them all that I commanded you. I we teaching all he has commanded, and now, you know, I'm a minister, and I vow this, I vow that, you know, all that before the Lord is useless, worthless, if you are not obeying him, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. For lo, I am with you till the end of the world. The Lord give us understanding. The Lord give you understanding. Religious people in the world, I used to be there, I used to be with them. We vow, we vow, Lord, if you do this, but we are ignorant of the promises of God, we are ignorant of the provision of God, we are ignorant of the precept of the Lord. Vow, 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 I vow this, I vow this. And some people even vow not to do what God wants them to do. Now, my first wife is gone. I vow not to marry. Vow, vow. What if God wants you to marry? Because it's not good for the man to be alone. I was invited somewhere, and uh, they called me to teach. And he said, I could teach everything and anything in the Bible. And he brought their ministers together as to teach them. And I taught and taught and taught. And, but they have one kind of doctrine in their fellowship. That if you lose your first wife, that you shouldn't marry again and I lost my first wife and I married again and I went I honored their invitation and I went a lot of things happened which they could not deny even their pastor he was interpreting for me and when I was praying I said somebody there you're almost blind but now I didn't know it was my interpreter the Lord will heal you now raise up your hand he kept on interpreting and I prayed and the following day he came and he said church people do you know I had lost 80 percent of my sight and he said, Dr. So-and-so in the congregation, can you stand up? The doctor stood up. And he said, Doctor, tell our church how my sight was. The pastor said, only 20% of sight remained. And um, yesterday, when our guest speaker was speaking in prayer, and he said, this, this, I was the man. 
And this morning, as we are coming to church, I could read all the signboard. I could see everything clearly. It was like I have a new eyesight. That's all the clapping headquarters can do. Amen. But now we came to the minister's session. That one was general meeting. Now we came to the uh, minister's uh, session. And uh, I give them a chance to ask what they ask question here. I answer question there. Answered. Now the final question. Pastor, you lost your wife. True. We heard, and not only that we heard, we have seen you came with a new wife. I said, yes. They said, why? I said, why are you asking me such a question? <laughs> oh, they said, because here, this is their vow. Oh, I said, that's not my vow. <laughs> what God reveals, I do. And that's why God told me, God revealed to me, I should marry. That it's better to marry than to burn. That's the commandment of the Lord. They, they didn't want the commandment of the Lord. They wanted vow. What do you want? I said, what do you want? Tell me out again. Out loud again. Go back to those commandments. I've read commandments to you from Matthew to Revelation. That one is greater than any vow. If you've lost your wife, don't make a foolish vow. You've lost your wife, you've lost this, you've lost that. Don't make a foolish vow. Just go back to the word of God, as many as alleged. By the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Are the children of God in the house today? Yeah. Rise up and tell the Lord, rise up and tell the Lord, obey the commandments of the Lord. It says, ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. Open your mouth and pray. Are you born again? Sanctify them through thy truth. The word is true. Are you sanctified? Sanctified heart, sanctified tongue, sanctified behavior, sanctified lifestyle. Are you obeying the commandments of the Lord with his sanctified attitude? Vow, vow, vow. Deal with the commandments first. Whatever you are promising the Lord, let it be on the basis of the commandment of the Lord. What he requires, what he demands, what he wants. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. That's his commandment. Are you tarrying in prayer? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Are you tarrying in the presence of the Lord? Forgive. That's the commandment. Seventy times seven times. Are you forgiving people on founded offenses? You cannot even establish that you offended me. You cannot even establish that he has done anything wrong. And yet you have something in your heart. Picking offense everywhere. But he said, forgive 
what vow are you making that will be acceptable in the sight of the Lord when you're not forgiving 70 times seven times? It says, give, that's commandment, and shall be given unto you. Are you giving anything voluntarily, happily, cheerfully to your neighbor, to your fellow member, to the ministers? They don't need criticism, don't give criticism. They don't need fighting, don't give fighting. Just earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That's what you do. Are you obedient to that? Deny yourself. Sell. We like to react instead of learning. Instead of correcting. Instead of being transformed when we hear the word of God. If a man follows after me and he does not deny himself, bear his cross, he cannot be my disciple. Can you deny that urge of doing something that will show you a man of the flesh, a woman of the flesh? Deny that, otherwise you cannot be his disciple. Love, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself, and love fellow believers as Christ has loved you. If your vow does not recognize love to God, love to man, that vow is thrown back at your face. Keep the commandments of the Lord. He told you to wait in his presence. Are you waiting in prayer? Or have you bowed to hinder other people who want to pray? If that's your vow, commitment, determination. Your vow is against the commandment of God and the consecration of the children of God. Repent of sinful vows. Repent of fleshly vows. Repent of traditional vows. And what is essential, important in the sight of God? Obedience. Take care of that. Your obligation to God. Take care of that. Your offering. 
your speech before the Lord. Take care of that. Just as God speak in days, times, years gone by, so the Lord is speaking today, and there is just one thing to do, just obey, just obey. If you're in the Savior's hand, you must do as he commands. Don't stop to reason why. I just want to think you do. To the commandment of God, to the word of God, just obey, just obey. If our mansions fear your side, at the end of your life's journey, here comes the commandment of the Lord. If you are born again, if you are seriously on your way to heaven, if you believe the word of God, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. His message still comes to you. Just obey just obey that the secret of fellowship with God not vows that the secret of walking with God walking by faith in obedience to the word of God just obey fight your flesh Fight your sin. Fight your compromise. Fight your depravity. Your Adamic nature. Fight it. And be an overcomer. And internally, in your heart, with all the resources of grace you have, honestly contend against your bad habit, honestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Fight your pride earnestly so that the faith was delivered unto the saints will be established in you. If you are made an ignorant vow. that I will not marry but your flesh is telling another story go before the Lord and repent of that ignorant vow 
God does not want you to vow that you will not marry and you are keeping the vow and you are committing adultery or fornication in the secret. Obeying that vow, carrying through on that vow and living a filthy life, a licentious life, a pornographic life in the secret. The vow will not take you to heaven. The bad life, fleshly life you are living in the secret as a result of your vow will take you to hell. Repent. Of that fleshly vow, traditional vow, religious vow while the vow is driving you to break the commandments of God let there be a change let there be a transformation. Allow the grace of God to flow into your life and be in Christ a new creature. Old things pass away. Old ignorance pass away. Old riches unteachable mind pass away and then you become a new creature in Christ In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you for how you have spoken to us today. There are times where we've taken our vows above the commandments of the Lord. And there are times where we thought that the vows are the things that would hold us. But you have made us to know today from the words I have spoken that the commandments of the Lord stand at sure and that's the one we need to hold on to. Because it's the commandment of the Lord that can lead us on. As we keep expecting your coming, it is only the commandments that you have given to us that can help us walk in this righteousness. The righteousness that you have shown unto us. The righteousness that you have given us. This light and the eternal life that no one takes away from us. Thank you for this illumination of your word you have granted unto us today. We are praying, O oh Lord, let your mercy in any way that we have taken the vow above these commandments, let the mercy of the Lord come upon us and help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the light you have shown unto us. That even the people around us, the people wherever we are, the people in our places of work, they see the light in our life and the light that you want to shine, that even souls are drawn to you. Not the light that is shown through the vow we commit or we have. Not the light that is shown through the, the vow that we have placed as, on, on, on ourselves. But the light that is shown through the commandments of the word. Lord, we pray that this light as we have gotten it today will give us this true illumination in the name of Jesus. And we are praying for our Father in the Lord that you have used today. You have used him to bring us back to the scripture. You have used him to give us that direction as you, the Father, has shown to us. 
Lord, we are praying. You keep him stronger for us in Jesus' name. Yes, Moses used years and years. As, he get, as his years go, get, went stronger and higher, he became more stronger. Lord, we are praying, our Father in the Lord, as his years is going stronger and higher, he will become more stronger in the name of Jesus. And this week will be a glorious week for us. This week will be a glorious week for us. And this week, the line of this commandment will be the direction of our life in the name of Jesus. Anywhere darkness is coming to draw us back, anywhere Satan is coming to draw us back and saying, no, yes, you've heard the word, but I want to take it away from you. We come against him in the name of Jesus. We go in this, the might of the Lord. This week we go in the strength of the Lord, and the Lord keep us stronger and stronger. I pray for this church. The Lord will keep the church standing stronger. I said the Lord will keep the church standing stronger. And heaven is our target. We will not miss it. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen.